It was an alien holocaust waiting to happen. The Andromedans were about to experience absolute devastation at the hands of Craig Lewis, and all he carried was a beat-up engineer's toolkit. Craig exited the transport ship onto Zephyrian soil, immediately greeted by Wren, the leader of the desperate Andromedan High Council. Wren towered over Craig, his forearms clasped together as if in prayer. Prayer that the human weapons engineer could save his species from annihilation. Thank you for coming, Craig Lewis of Earth. We have limited time before the Korgon fleets arrive. Our people are not fighters. We do not know war. Wren's voice quivered. If you cannot help us defend ourselves, the Korgon will wipe us out completely. Every last Andromedan slaughtered. Craig snorted. He slung his toolkit over his shoulder, striding alongside Wren and the delegation of frightened officials. I've never met an alien race that didn't know war. You're telling me you Andromedans lasted this long without any weapons at all? Not even a pea-shooter? Wren shook his head sadly. We are builders, not destroyers. But now we have no choice. We must adapt our technology for defense or cease to exist. The human smirked confidently. Clearly these blue bastards had never witnessed what human ingenuity could do, what weapons a lifetime of warfare could produce. Craig patted his toolkit. Inside were blueprints for missiles, rail guns, and nuclear bombs, the most advanced killing machines Earth had to offer. But as Craig took in the Andromedan homeworld, he started having second thoughts. Floating anti-grav cars zoomed down prismatic roadways. Biomechanical towers sprouted from the Earth, twisting into the heavens. It was a technological paradise, a utopia he could barely comprehend. What the hell kind of weapons would these aliens already have if they could build all this? Maybe Craig wasn't here to save the Andromedans, after all. Maybe they'd brought him here to stop them from going too far, from taking the most advanced alien weaponry in the universe and perfecting it for human hands. The Andromedan Defense Ministry was an impressive sight, even to Craig's jaded eyes. He'd seen his fair share of military installations, but nothing quite like this. The sleek, organic curves of the building seemed to defy gravity, and the air hummed with an energy that set his teeth on edge. Inside, Craig was introduced to the Andromedan military leadership, including General Zahn. The general was an imposing figure, with piercing eyes that seemed to see right through Craig. He had the look of a seasoned veteran, someone who had seen his fair share of battles, and he clearly wasn't thrilled about having a human poking around his weapons research facilities. But Craig didn't let that bother him. He was here to do a job, and he wasn't about to let some alien general stand in his way. He followed Zahn and his team into the heart of the research complex, where he was given access to the Andromedan weapons archives. What he found there was nothing short of astounding. The Andromedans had developed a range of non-lethal weapons that made Earths look like child's play, sonic disruptors that could shatter bone without breaking skin, stasis fields that could freeze an enemy in place, neural inhibitors that could shut down a person's brain without killing them. It was all very impressive, but Craig couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. These weapons were designed to incapacitate, not kill, and while that was all well and good for a species like the Andromedans, who valued peace above all else, it wasn't going to do much good against the Corgans. Those bastards were known for their brutal, unrelenting attacks. They wouldn't hesitate to slaughter every last Andromedan, non-lethal weapons be damned. As Craig delved deeper into the archives, he stumbled upon something that made his heart skip a beat. It was a classified project, codenamed Peacekeeper. The details were scarce, but from what he could gather, it was some kind of energy weapon, one capable of disrupting matter at a subatomic level, essentially erasing targets from existence. The project had been deemed too dangerous by the Andromedan High Council, and never completed, but Craig could see its potential. A weapon like that could be the key to protecting the Andromedans from the Korgons and any other hostile race that might come knocking. He requested a meeting with Wren to discuss the possibility of finishing the Peacekeeper project, but the Andromedan leader was hesitant. He feared that such a weapon could fall into the wrong hands and be used for destruction rather than defense. Craig argued that the Peacekeeper was their best hope against the Korgans, 
that without it, the Andromedans were doomed. But Wren remained unconvinced. He thanked Craig for his input, but made it clear that the Peacekeeper project was off-limits. Just as the meeting was wrapping up, an alarm sounded throughout the Defense Ministry. Craig's heart sank as he realized what it meant. The Corgons had launched an attack on an Andromedan colony world. The war had begun, and the Andromedans were woefully unprepared. The piercing wail of the alarms overwhelmed the command center as Craig and Wren burst through the doors. Uniformed Andromedans scrambled to their stations, their faces taut with fear and urgency. The main view screen displayed a nightmarish scene. The lush, verdant world of Ilaria engulfed in flames, its defenses crumbling under the onslaught of Corgan plasma weaponry. By the stars, Wren gasped, his voice trembling, they're slaughtering our people. General Zahn, his expression grim, barked orders to his subordinates. Deploy all available forces to Ilaria immediately. We must protect the colonists at all costs. But even as the general spoke, it became painfully clear that any reinforcements would arrive far too late. The Corgons, their ships sleek and deadly, swarmed the colony like locusts, systematically eradicating every trace of Andromedan life. Craig gripped the edge of a nearby console, his mind racing. There had to be a way to stop this massacre. And then it hit him. The Peacekeeper, he said, turning to Wren. It's our only chance. Wren's eyes widened, his hesitation palpable. But the risks... We don't have a choice, Craig insisted. That weapon can disrupt matter, right? We could use it to create a barrier around the colony, buy us some time. General Zahn overheard the exchange and stepped forward, his brow furrowed. You're suggesting we use an untested, highly unstable weapon? The very one the High Council deemed too dangerous? Craig met the General's gaze unflinchingly. It's either that or watch your people die, your call. A tense silence hung in the air, broken only by the muted chaos of the command center. Finally, Wren nodded, his shoulders sagging with the weight of the decision. Do it, he said quietly. Craig wasted no time. He assembled a team of Andromedan scientists and raced to the secret underground facility housing the Peacekeeper Project. The complex was a labyrinth of gleaming corridors and high-tech labs, but Craig navigated it with single-minded determination. When they reached the main lab, the scientists set to work, their long fingers flying over consoles and adjusting delicate instruments. Craig joined them, his own hands steady as he tweaked the weapon's energy core. But even as they labored, the view screens lining the walls showed the unfolding horror on Ilaria. The Corgons were relentless, their weapons cutting through Andromedan defenses like a hot knife through butter. Come on, come on, Craig muttered, sweat beading on his brow. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the peacekeeper thrummed to life, its sleek metal casing pulsing with barely contained power. It's ready, one of the scientists announced, his voice tight with tension. Craig nodded, his jaw set. Let's get it to Ilaria now. They loaded the weapon onto a waiting ship, its engines already primed for takeoff. As they hurtled through the star-studded void, Craig couldn't shake the feeling that everything was riding on this moment. The ship dropped out of hyperspace above Ilaria, and Craig's heart sank. The once vibrant world was now a scorched husk, its surface pockmarked with craters and ruins, and in orbit, looming like a harbinger of death, was a massive Corgan warship. Craig's hands flew over the controls, preparing to activate the Peacekeeper. But even as he did, he knew it might not be enough. The Corgon ship was a behemoth, bristling with weapons that could reduce Ilaria to cinders. But he had to try. For the Andromedans, for the innocent lives down on that planet, he had to give them a chance. Craig's finger hovered over the activation button, his heart pounding in his ears. The fate of an entire species rested on his shoulders. He took a deep breath and pressed the button, praying that the Peacekeeper would be enough to stop the Corgan onslaught and save the Andromedan people from annihilation. Craig's finger slammed down on the Peacekeeper's firing button. The weapon hummed, its energy core pulsing with raw power. A searing beam of pure destructive force erupted from the barrel, lancing through space towards the looming Corgan warship. 
The blinding lance of light struck the vessel's hull dead center. For a heartbeat, the warship hung motionless as if frozen in time. Then, in a flash of searing brilliance, the mighty ship disintegrated. Its reinforced armor, its devastating armaments, its crew, all of it vanished in an instant, reduced to scattered atoms drifting in the void. Shocked silence gripped the bridge of the Andromedan ship. Wide eyes stared at the empty space where the Corgon Dreadnought had been just moments before. The once unstoppable alien juggernaut had been erased from existence with a single shot. By the stars, Wren breathed, his voice trembling with awe and disbelief. I never imagined... Down on Ilaria's ravaged surface, the Corgon ground forces turned their eyes skyward, just in time to see their mighty flagship wiped out in the blink of an eye. Panic spread through their ranks like wildfire. The invincible Corgon war machine, the scourge of a hundred worlds, thrown into disarray by a single human weapon. Craig leaned forward, the glow of victory in his eyes. This is our chance. Press the attack. The Andromedan fleet surged forward, their sleek ships gleaming in the light of Ilaria's sun. Sonic disruptors and stasis fields hammered the Corgan vessels, disabling their engines and weapons. The once fearsome alien ships drifted helplessly, their crews incapacitated by the Andromedan onslaught. One by one, the Corgan ships signaled their surrender. The battle for Ilaria was over, the colony saved from annihilation by the slimmest of margins. As Craig stepped off the transport ship onto the scorched earth of the Andromedan colony, he was greeted by a sea of grateful faces. Survivors, their blue skin smudged with soot and grime, surged forward to thank the human who had saved their lives and their world. Wren and the members of the Andromedan High Council pushed through the crowd to reach Craig's side. Their faces were lined with exhaustion, but their eyes shone with gratitude. Craig Lewis of Earth, Wren said, his voice heavy with emotion. You have done the impossible. You have saved our people from certain destruction. We are forever in your debt. Craig nodded, the weight of the peacekeeper heavy on his shoulders. We did what we had to do, but this weapon, it's too powerful. We can't let something like this exist. It's too dangerous. Wren's brow furrowed with concern. You may be right. The peacekeeper is a tool of unimaginable destruction. In the wrong hands, it could bring ruin to the galaxy. Craig met Wren's gaze, his expression resolute. We have to dismantle it, break it down, destroy the plans, but maybe, maybe we can learn from it, your people and mine, working together to create something better, something that can protect, not just destroy. Wren considered Craig's words, then nodded slowly. A new era of cooperation between our worlds, a chance for lasting peace. As the two leaders watched, Andromedan and human scientists, the best and brightest of their kinds, began the painstaking process of disassembling the peacekeeper. Piece by piece, component by component, they took apart the weapon that had changed the course of history. And as they worked, a new future began to take shape. A future where Andromedans and humans stood side by side, united in the pursuit of knowledge and the defense of the innocent. A future forged in the fires of war, but tempered by the bonds of friendship and trust. Craig looked out over the bustling spaceport, watching as Andromedan and human ships lifted off side by side. The scars of battle still lingered, but already new life was beginning to take root. The once ravaged colony was being rebuilt, stronger and more vibrant than ever before. He turned to Wren, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. You know, when I first came here, I thought I was going to be the one saving your people. But maybe, maybe we saved each other. Wren clasped Craig's shoulder, his grip firm and warm. Indeed, my friend, indeed. As the Andromedans and humans worked tirelessly to integrate the Peacekeeper's technology into their defense systems, a chilling discovery stopped them dead in their tracks. The weapon's energy core, the very heart of its destructive power, was deteriorating at an alarming rate. Craig stared at the readouts in disbelief. This can't be happening. We checked the core's stability a dozen times. Wren's face was grim. If the core fails, it will unleash an explosion capable of wiping out entire star systems, billions of lives snuffed out in an instant. 
The Andromedan scientists scrambled to find a solution, but the damage was too severe. The core couldn't be stabilized. It was a ticking time bomb, and they were running out of options. There's only one way, Craig said, his voice heavy with resignation. We have to jettison the core into a black hole. The singularity will contain the blast. But there was a catch. The nearest black hole was located in the Zathros Expanse, a lawless region of space known for its treacherous asteroid fields and ruthless pirate clans. Craig stepped forward, his jaw set. I'll pilot the ship. I've navigated asteroid fields before. It's the only way to ensure the core reaches the black hole. Wren shook his head. I can't let you do this alone. The peacekeeper was our responsibility. I'm coming with you. Together, they loaded the failing core onto a small, agile ship and set off into the void. As they approached the Zathros expanse, the asteroids loomed before them like jagged teeth. Craig's hands flew over the controls, weaving the ship through the deadly maze of rock and ice. Suddenly the ship shuddered as a blast of energy slammed into its shields. Pirates, their ships bristling with illegal weapons, swarmed out from behind the asteroids. Wren manned the ship's defences as Craig pushed the engines to their limits. They ducked and weaved, trading fire with the pirate vessels, but the core's containment field was failing, weakened by the battle. Alarms blared through the ship. The core was going critical, they were out of time. Craig turned to Wren, his eyes filled with grim determination. You have to get out of here. Take the escape pod, I'll manually detonate the core inside the black hole's event horizon. Wren tried to protest, but Craig cut him off. Wren, please, the Andromedans need you, your people need you. With a heavy heart, Wren climbed into the escape pod. As it jettisoned away from the ship, he watched helplessly as Craig piloted the vessel towards the black hole's swirling vortex. Craig's hands were steady on the controls. He thought of Earth, of the Andromedans, of the countless lives he was saving. As the black hole loomed before him, he closed his eyes and detonated the core. A blinding flash of light erupted from the singularity, swallowing Craig's ship whole. And then silence. The core was gone, its destructive power safely contained within the black hole's depths. Ran adrift in his escape pod, wept for the friend he had lost. Craig Lewis, the human who had saved them all, was gone. But his sacrifice would not be forgotten. The Andromedans and humans mourned together, united in their grief and their gratitude. Craig's legacy, one of cooperation and understanding, would live on. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.